Hello and welcome to the Hub on CGTN. I'm Wang Guan in Xi'an, the ancient Chinese capital and the starting point of the historic Silk Road. Now, it appears only fitting that the China Central Asia Summit, the first of its kind, is taking place here in the northwestern Chinese city. On the sidelines of the summit, we caught up with Vladimir Nolov, the former Secretary General of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. He's also the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uzbekistan. Our conversation began with the China Central Asia Summit. Minister Nolov, welcome to the Hub on CGTN. It's an honor to have you with us. Thank you. Minister Nolov, let's talk about this China Central Asia Summit, uh, the first of its kind. What concrete outcomes are you expecting from this summit? Uh, uh, thank you very much for your questions and initiative to organize this interview. I'm confident that the forthcoming summit in China with the five Central Asian countries will be great significance for the development and deepening of relations between our countries. It will be the first high-level collective dialogue in more than 30 years of cooperation between leaders of China and Central Asia states reflecting the high level of political, trust, and strategic partnership between their parties. I am convinced that the summit will further strengthen regional cooperation because of mutual respect, equality, and mutual benefit which we have between our relationship. The leaders of our countries will strive to build a common destiny community of China and Central Asia that will serve the interests of all countries in the region and uh, contribute to peace and prosperity on the Euro Asian continent. So, Minister Nolov, what do you expect this China Central Asia mechanism to do in terms of security and peace, really to enhance security and peace in the region? The China Central Asian mechanism is a new platform for dialogue and cooperation between the countries of the region and China. It promotes uh, friendship and trust between peoples, enhanced practical cooperation under the Belt and Road Initiative and jointly addresses security threats and challenges. In addition, the China Central Asia format promote peace and security not only in the region, but also globally. The member states of this format adhere to the principles of peaceful coexistence, cooperation and multilateralism, support political resolution of conflicts, fight against terrorism, extremism, and trafficking, drug trafficking, as well as environmental protection, advocate respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity, and interests of other countries to uh, strive to build an open, inclusive, and transparent regional order based on equality and mutual benefit. And Minister Nolov, um, if I can ask a follow-up question regarding uh, the China Central Asia mechanism, you know, there, ho there have been a whole lot of talks about the Chinese influence in Central Asia these days. For example, a popular book um, recently reads that Sinostan, China's inadvertent empire, basically holding a critical view towards the Chinese influence in Central Asia, you know, as if China is taking over the Central Asia uh, sphere of influence uh, in terms of culture and economic influence. Uh, how would you characterize the Chinese influence in Central Asia? So I, I can, yes, such discourse we uh, more now hear about it, but at the same time, uh, the, uh, from five Central Asian countries, three of them uh, the, uh, have a common border with the China. This, uh, uh, we have this such influence more than uh, 2,000 years from time of Great Silk Road. And if we're looking to the modern time, uh, this uh, um, uh, partnership based, as I mentioned it, on the principle of uh, mutual uh, benefits, mutual trust, and mutual respect. And uh, Uzbekistan, uh, as a key participant uh, in the Central Asia Plus PRC format, uh, uh, play an important role in strengthening this cooperation. And uh, that's why when we hear such discourse, certainly we should look to the result of this cooperation. If we're looking to the data, uh, our, the China now is uh, leading our trade partner. The last, uh, the last day it was uh, $9 billion 
uh, cooperation between two other countries. If we take the Central Asia in whole, it is uh, our trade turnover last year rise at 49 percent. It was uh, it came to 70 billion dollar uh, and, and more than 70 billion dollar. That's why this cooperation is mutually beneficial. Very true. Um, bilateral trade, uh, meaning China and Central Asian trade, have been growing at double digit. We know this CKU or China. A Kyrgyzstan Uzbekistan railway that has a great potential that was first proposed back in the 1990s. Uh, and, and if completed, it will be one of the shortest routes linking China and Western Europe. Uh, it has had uh, quite a bit of challenges. Uh, what is the latest regarding that, and what is your view regarding this railway? Uh, we are uh, uh, interested for developing uh, more transport routes, for having access to world seaports, and at the same time, to the markets of our neighboring countries, and China is our neighbor. That's why many 20 years, Uzbekistan uh, favored and uh, supported idea for, for construction railroad, China, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, because it will shortest way, as I told you, 300 kilometers will be, uh, will, today is between Uzbekistan and China, and that, so we can deliver our goods so quick to the Chinese market at the same time, China can transport their goods to the European markets and Middle Eastern countries through these transport corridors, and uh, it will be 900 kilometers shorter, and eight days it will take. And now is uh, feasibility studying in the way of finishing, and I think that uh, in the uh, from the second half of this year, construction of this railroad will begin. We are sure that this construction will be for benefit of. China and Central Asian countries. And uh, we are sure that after construction of this uh, railroad, uh, we will have more access to the Chinese market for rising our trade turnover. This transport uh, communication playing important role. And in the summer can Soviet special was made decision for uh, developing transport interconnectivity between ACO member states. So President Mirzi Yoyev um, of Uzbekistan said that prioritizing a good neighborliness, uh, namely uh, developing and advancing relations with China, is a foreign policy priority for Uzbekistan. Uh, how do you see that principle translating into action and into actual policy making? And how would you characterize the current state of China-Uzbekistan relations? Uzbekistan and China have been uh, successfully building bilateral mutually beneficial cooperation, uh, which has acquired a dynamic and multidimensional and uh, long-term character, owing uh, to the efforts of the two leaders, uh, relation between Uzbekistan and China have reached a high level of interaction, uh, which the comprehensive, uh, while the comprehensive strategic partnership has been enhancing economic ties in the new area. Since 2011, most favorite nation treatment has been established in mutual trade. In 2022, trade turnover between Uzbekistan and China for the first time, as I said, you reached 9 billion, having in, uh, in, uh, increased by 20% compared to 21. In the first quarter of this year, China became Uzbekistan's main trade partner with the uh, total trade volume of 2.3 billion US dollars. Special attention is paid to uh, development of investment cooperation between the two countries. The total volume uh, of absorbed Chinese investment for last year amounted to about 11 billion uh, US dollars, of which more than 2 billion only the last year. And uh, but at the same time, we are organizing the cultural days of Chinese cultural days in our uh, countries at the same time, film festival of Chinese, the same in China is uh, uh, giving more attention to Uzbek culture and traditions. So Minister Nolov, on the Belt and Road initiatives that was first conceived 10 years ago by President Xi Jinping, he proposed this idea in Astana, Kazakhstan. Um, 10 years on, the jury might still be out about the utility of this mechanism, but how do you look at the merits of the Belt and Road Initiative. For economic cooperation after implementing this initiative from uh, 2013 
to, uh, to till 2022, uh, trade in goods between China and countries along the Belt and Road has doubled from over one uh, trillion US dollar to over uh, two trillion uh, with an average annual uh, gross rate of eight uh, person. And the same time, uh, by bilateral investment between China and countries along this route amounted to more than 270 billion. And uh, a lot, uh, according to the World Bank expert, the joint construction of the Belt and Road will leave some 8 million people out of extreme uh, poetry and 32 million people out of moderate poetry in countries along the routes. I think this important figures, which is showing how the countries along this uh, one belt, one route benefiting uh, from cooperation with China and implementing this important project. The Asian uh, Infrastructure Investment Bank, the Silk Road Fund, the Green Silk Road and the Digital Silk Road have been established and works is uh, underway to develop the Health Silk Road, uh, uh, and the green energy, green infrastructure, and green finance. In all this project, Uzbekistan and Central Asian countries have great interest for fully participate for implementing this project in our regions too. These are uh, the freight route has evolved into a key commerce corridor between Europe and China via Central Asia, uh, as well as an artery of Belt and Road in uh, uh, initiative collaboration. As I mentioned it before, it is uh, 100, only last year, uh, 65,000 voyages had been completed through Central Asia and mostly through Kazakhstan with over 150 million metric tons of commodities worth of 300 billion moved over, over these routes. The railway express has uh, removed the bottlenecks in cross-border uh, trade and uh, unlock the potential for economic growth in the region that no one had foreseen. The China Central Asia Summit uh, will give new impetus to the high quality construction of the Belt and Road. We are sure in this, as I mentioned it uh, to you about construction, this China, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan railroad, which, which will give the big impetus and it will be real evidence of the uh, usefulness of this, this initiative for benefit of our people. When we're talking about this uh, one bell, one road, we should not forget about the focus of China in framework of uh, the format Central Asia plus China to green economy. This important uh, green energy, now is alternative energy, is uh, began is more uh, developed in Central Asian countries and Uzbekistan, and Chinese company today is involved too in this project for the construction solar power and wind energy uh, um, uh, in our country. That's why uh, um, uh, improving ecology became one of the important in this area. Why? Because we share the same uh, mountain, Tenshan. The Tenshan, the uh, this ice in Tenshan now melting. It is because Central Asian countries uh, became more uh, under the negative impact of climate change and rise uh, the temperature brought to reducing the number of ice on the uh, mountain area as we have Tanshan and uh, Pamir. With two on the rivers, Amudaria and Sudaria supplying water to our nation. But at the same time, uh, we see as a uh, desertification and reduce of water, and at the same time, the rise of population. Today, in Central Asia, 78 million population. But in 2010, the population will be 110 million. That's why it is very serious issues. And the new technology, water, uh, uh, rational using of water uh, in the agricultural area, which China now implementing, is very important for us. I myself, in Sindao, visited the center for rising the rice in the salted land area. And the impressive technology, I, uh, I can say, and we focus it on using this technology for rising productivity and, uh, and reducing the water supply in agricultural area. 
and at the same time improve ecology in our country. Minister Nolov, uh, thank you so much for your time uh, and your insight. Our greetings from Xi'an and um, thank you for everything. Thank you.